हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम प्रोफेसर श्रद्धा फिरके फ्रॉम द के के वर्क कॉलेज काका साहेब नगर डालमेट टुडे आई एम गिविंग अ लेक्चर ऑन वायरलेस लैन लेट्स सी व्हाट वी विल सी इन अ वायरलेस लैन इन वायरलेस लैन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी व्हाट इज अ वायरलेस लैन देन the ieee standard 802.11 architecture which is a standard for wireless lan in that we will study dss ess and its station types mm -hmm. then we will study a bluetooth architecture which is also a wireless technology in which we are going to study piconet and scatter let's start let's start with the wireless lan What is a wireless LAN? Wireless LAN are those local area networks that is LAN that uses high frequency radio waves instead of cables for connecting the devices in a LAN. Users connected by the wireless LANs can move around within the area of the network coverage. The most wireless LANs are based on the standard IEEE 802.11, which is also known as a Wi-Fi in our common language. See, this is how the wireless LAN works. The wireless LAN has two types of architecture. First one is ad hoc mode, and another one is infrastructure mode. That we will see in next slide. So, what are the advantages of wireless LANs? See, wireless LANs. provides clutter free homes offices and other network places then lans are scalable in nature that is we can add or remove any devices in the network with the greater ease then next the system is portable within the network coverage and access to the network is not bounded by the length of the cables next installation and setup is much easier than the wired compound wired counterparts the equipments and the setup cost is reduced now what are the disadvantages of wireless lans since the radio waves are used for the communication in wireless lans the signals are sometimes noisier with more interference from the nearby systems then the greater care is needed for encrypting the information also they are more prone to errors so they require greater bandwidth than the wired lans and the wire wireless lans that is wifi are more slower than the wired lans so these are some advantages and disadvantages of the wifi or that is wire Next, we will study 802.11 architecture. The IEEE 802.11 architecture is used for the wireless LANs, as we have seen in earlier. There are some components for the IEEE 802.11 architecture, which are as follows. First is stations, that is STE. The stations comprises all devices and equipments that are connected to wireless LANs. there are two types of stations first one is wireless access points that is wap the wap or simply access points are generally a wireless routers that forms the base station or access and another one is clan the clans are workstations computers laptops printers smartphones etc each station has a wireless network interface control Then the next component for the IEEE 802.11 architecture is the BSS. BSS that is Basic Service Set. The Basic Service Set is a set of group of stations that communicating at the physical layer. The BSS can be of two categories depending upon the mode of operations. The first one is infrastructure BSS. that is the devices connected or communicate with other devices to the access point so when there is a access point between the devices 
that BSS is known as an infrastructure BSS. And when the there is no access point, that is the devices communicate in the peer-to-peer -peer basis, that is ad hoc basis, then that is known as an ad hoc BSS or independent BSS. Next one is extended service set, that is ESS. It is a set of all connected BSS. When the group of BSS is created, that, that will be known as an extended service set, that is ESS. And the last one is distribution system, that is DS. When it connects the access points in ESS, when the all ESS are connected to the access points, then that forms the DS, that is distribution system. So these are some equipments or these are some components that are used in IEEE 802.11 architecture. These are stations, then BSS, ESS and S. Now we will see what is a BSS in beef. So what is a BSS basic service set? The basic service set contains a stationary or a mobile wireless stations that are central base stations called access points that is AP. When there are some stationary or mobile wireless stations that are connected to the access points then that forms a BSS. The use of access point is optional. If there is a access point, if the access point is not present, then that will be known as a standalone network or it is known as a ad hoc network. Such BSS cannot send the data to other BSS. This type of architecture is also known as a ad hoc architecture. And when the BSS in which an access point is present, which is known as a infrastructure network. See, there is a BSS without access point and this is with access point. Here it is a ad hoc type of network which is a BSS without access point. Here the stations can communicate to each other and here the stations will communicate to each other with the BSS only that will be connected to the access points. So these are two types of BSS. Now next we will see extended service set that is ESS. An extended service set is created by joining two or more basic service sets that is BSS with having an access points. Like this, this is an ESS where there is one BSS with an access point, there is some another BSS with an access point and the third BSS with an access point. So these all three access points are connected to the distribution system to a server or a gateway. It will form an extended service set. So this system is called as an extended service set that is ESS. These extended networks are created by joining an access point of the BSS through the wired LAN called as a distribution system as we have seen in earlier diagram. There are two types of stations in ESS. First one is mobile stations. Mobile stations that are normal stations inside the BSS and stationary stations. These are the access points stations that are part of the wired LAN. The communication between two stations in a two different BSS can usually occur via two access points. When we have to communicate through one BSS to another BSS, then the access points are used to communicate with the two stations from the different BSS. When a mobile station which belongs to one more than one BSS at the same time. So one station can belong to one or more BSS at the same time. Let's see which are the different station types of 802.11. There are different types of 
uh, session types based on their mobility in the wireless LAN. These are no transition mobility, then BSS transition mobility and ESS transition mobility. What is a no transition mobility? These type of stations are either stationary or immovable or move only inside the BSS. So there is a no transitivity or no transition mobility. Next are BSS transition mobility. The stations that can move within one BSS to another. But this movement is limited inside the ESS. In one ESS, the stations can move from one BSS to another BSS. Then that are called as a BSS transition mobility stations. And the last one is ESS transition mobility. These type of stations can move from one ESS to another and the communication may or may not be continuous when a stations move from one ESS to another ESS. So these are three different important types of stations based on their mobility in the wireless lab. Now we have seen the wireless LAN that is a Wi-Fi. Now let's see what is a Bluetooth. Bluetooth is an infrared, one of the major wireless technologies developed to achieve W PAN that is wireless personal area networks. Bluetooth is a wireless LAN technology used to connect the devices of different functions such as telephones, computers, that is laptops or desktop, notebooks, cameras, printers and so on. Bluetooth is an example of personal area network which has a area which is a personal area network which is not up to the LAN network. The Bluetooth project was started by the SIG, that is Spatial Interest Group, formed by the four companies, that is IBM, Intel, Nokia, and Toshiba, for interconnecting, computing, and communicating devices using the short range, then lower power, and inexpensive wireless radios. The project was named Bluetooth after the name of Viking King Harlan Blatter who unified Denmark and Norway in 10th century. Nowadays Bluetooth technology is used for several computer and non-computer applications which is very commonly used technology in earlier every smartphone and other connecting devices. Now let's see what is the architecture of this Bluetooth. Bluetooth architecture defines two types of networks. First one is peak unit and another one is scatternet. Like this, the peak unit is like this and the scatternet is in this way. The peak unit consists of one primary or master station and another are secondary stations or a slave stations. The communication occurs only via primary station. If one secondary station has to send the data to another secondary station, then that data goes from the primary station or master station only. This is a peak unit network or a peak unit Bluetooth architecture. And the another one is scatternet, which is formed using two or more piconets in which the one secondary station acts as a primary station in another piconet that forms a scatter. That we will see in the next slide. Now let's see piconet architecture. Piconet is a Bluetooth network that consists of one primary that is a master mode mode and seven active secondary or slave nodes. Thus, the piconet can have up to eight active nodes, one master and seven 
slave stations or the stations between the distance of 10 meters. There can be only one primary or a master station in each piconet. The communication between the primary and the secondary can be one to one or one to main. Or the communication between master and slave. Slave to slave communication is not possible. The communication only occurs via master station or a primary station. This is how the Piconet architecture works. There is a primary station and the another one are slave stations or secondary stations. And the communication occurs only via primary station. Next we will see a scatternet. A scatternet is a formed by combining various piconets. A slave in one piconet can act as a master in primary in the other piconet. Such a station or a node can receive the messages from the master in the first piconet and deliver these messages to its slaves in another piconet where it is acting as a master. So that node is also called as a bridge slave. Thus, a station can be member of two piconets. A station cannot be the master in two piconets. It will be master in only one piconet and it will act as a secondary in another piconet. This is how the scatternet works. There is a one piconet network and this is another piconet network in which this node is a bridge slave node which is a secondary for the first piconet and primary station or a master station in another piconet. It will receive the messages from the primary station and provide the messages to its secondary station in another piconet. This is how the scatternet network works. Now finally, let's see what is the difference between piconet and scatternet. In this Bluetooth network, it is a piconet. The device can function either as a master or as a slave. But in a scatternet, it is in this Bluetooth network, the device can function as a master also and slave also. It serves a smaller coverage area in the piconet. It will be covering a smaller area while in a scattering it will cover a larger coverage area. In the piconet it supports maximum 8 nodes and in a scattering it supports more than 8 nodes because the scattering is a combination of 2 or more piconets. In the piconet it will allow the less efficient use of available Bluetooth channel bandwidth. Where in the scatternet, it will allow more efficient use of available Bluetooth channel bandwidth. So, dear students, I think we have understood the wireless LAN, then the Wi Fi, the Bluetooth architecture, in that the Piconet and scatternet. We will see next interesting video in next session. Thank you.